This has been uh, phenomenal. Um, really, really, really powerful, powerful, long, funny, both in the Tanya and in this. The, the prakim we're doing are very, very long. And today we're going to be finishing Bezrat Hashem, short shear, because the women's shear starts soon. But um, last year before Hanukkah. And then we'll, we'll, we'll be meeting again, I think, is Rev Tzvi and, and Rev Libra Lichter here tomorrow yeah. and Wednesday? Yeah. They, they're going straight through? Okay, Bezrat Hashem. Well, we're going to be continuing. When I get back, so in, the, in two weeks from now, the, actually, in the next year, the this will be Arche Kana, Sunday, right? Okay. Mitzvah okay. Hashem. Page, top of page 41. Ah, the schuss of the Piyasetzna, of the Eish Kodesh. Remember what someone said, every time you learn Eish Kodesh, you burn another Nazi? <laughs> you ever hear that line? Every time you learn a piece of this Sefer, you're burying another, another Nazi. Mamash. You're, you're burying, you're burying... <laughs> You're burying, you're, 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 it's, you don't have to think about human beings, you have to think about the, the koach of Sheker and Ra in the world. The, 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 the koach of Sheker and Ra in the world. I highly recommend this bit, this book I've been learning, Tom has been reading, Toby's been reading, Shimon. Uh, what's, the, what's it in English? It's what you brought back for me. Years of Wrath. Uh, uh, unreal. It's, it's basically the Eish Kodesh with a, in, in, in a historical context. What was going on while the Rebbe was saying the Torahs he was saying, in the ghetto. Phenomenal. Sorry? No, uh, um, is it, did it get here already? Ah. All right. Veda Aka, Sha Sheker Nimsa Bekoya Chayish, Afil Ime Eno Ome Sheker Befoal Al Etshu Evan, Utmimus Emes Metsius Anefesh Chasen. What the Rebbe did in this parak is that he redefine for the sake of our learning what the word sheker means. Sheker does not just mean that I say about a plant that it's a stone or about a person that they're a window. Sheker is something that he says throughout this whole parak is not living with the emet of your metziyot in the life of sheker, is sheker. And how did he, ref- what is, what's the word that he keeps on bringing in terms of Understanding how to live a life of your real metziyut. Tmeimut. Tmeimus. 
He's going to explain again what that means. So again, the Rebbe is saying that sheker nimtza bekoach ha'ish, this, this ability to lie to yourself and live a life of lie, somehow is very attainable. It's within the power of man and very accessible. It's actually going to be something we're going to be learning with in the women's shoe. It's very connected. Um, you're not a person, he's not saying you're, you're a pathological liar, or you're, you're basically saying that, like we said, like fans are windows, or that, or that color of the parochid is really orange. He's, they, he's saying, not if you're a person that's saying shkarim like that, that's not a, that's not a shaker that really messes with you. Tmimut emet metziut nefesh chaserlo. Look at this, this wording over here. The tmimus of the truth of the reality of your soul is what's lacking. And th- this whole sefer has been to form a chaver of people, <coughs> friendships, that bring out within you the gilui of your nefesh, of who you really are. That you're in the, when you're in the presence of certain people, who you really are comes out. We've spoken about this many times. How many Shabbos tables have we been at where we leave the Shabbos table and we wonder, like, oh my God, did I show up at all? Or was I just playing a role that I thought people expected me to play at this, at this Shabbos table? W- was I even there? Did I even show up? You know? So he's saying, here, the whole B'neich Machshav of this Chavraya, is a Chavraya where, yeah, you could still say that certain things are, are that or that, but the Gilui of your Nefesh should, should become revealed. That's the point of the Chavraya Kadisha of this B'nei Machshav Chabura. Weiter. Now he's talking about, okay, you're still here learning the Sefer? Meaning, it's week seven. You showed up, you're still here, right? You didn't run away yet? Okay. Talking to you, one of our Chavra. What should become your Hergel? What should become your, your natural <coughs> habit? Right? Liot pashtan tam bitmimus bechol in yanecha. In all your as itzukim, in everything that you do in your business, at the airport when they ask you about luggages, you'll see. When a friend asks you how Shabbos was, even if they were flying in here, and inside you were, you were thinking the whole time, why Hashem, why did you even create me? Say that to the person, that's what you were feeling. Don't say it was the highest because uh, that's what we do here. We say it's the highest. Um, you tell everybody how you tested me? What did I do? I forgot. You gave me a guitar and like, take it through security. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. On the way to Kiev. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, take it. need to go on the plane with you. I'm like, what? Wait, the shulcha? What chevra are you from? Ah, okay, okay. I'm like, oh, I'm going to the rabbi. So you're carrying a guitar that's not yours and through security. Yeah. While you're talking to a friend, whether you're just thinking something amongst yourself, you know what the titlotzetz means, right? What's that? No, that, that's that's atzlan. Titlotzetz means. Yeah, but it, but, it, but what is it, what is he referring to? <coughs> Don't belittle the the, 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 past of the opportunity of every single moment that's in front of you. And, and take people for, for their words. Just don't, don't try to... It doesn't just mean don't make fun of it. It's like, take, like, learn how to just hear what people are saying and don't try to do a whole chakira on it. How are you? Oh, good morning. What are you really telling me? No, no, no. Like, people live like that. Good Shabbos. Shavuot Tov, Chavra. What does he want from us now, right? Why is he smiling? He wants to get... <laughs> you know? Why is he really laughing right now? Like, people, people, people could live like, why is this feeling still on? Does he want to make us feel like we're less from than him? Like, this guy... <laughs> like, the, the, the... Right, he's wearing jeans. But wait a second. What's the... <laughs> You know, another guy with the guards in here this morning, like, what, what, what's happening to us? Like, <laughs> I got you. So it's like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> he's saying, he's saying, no, 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 just let, like, people are doing what they're doing, and, and there's, no, there's no Indian to build a whole binyan of chakir. Like, 
and, and don't try to find a thing that you can start to become cynical about either, which is what we've mastered as a society of modern Orthodox Judaism. Mamash, cynicism and sarcasm is like parading through every Shabbos meal and shuls. And when the rab- for the rabbi to get even an ounce of attention, he has to make a sarcastic joke to begin, you know, just like the rabbi did this Shabbos about this of Sfard in shul. Like, it, it's become, it's something, it's, it's very, very, very tough. Um, this is like a, this might not seem like, oh, it's so hard. He's just saying, beat me with some pshitas. <laughs> And then when you really, he says, Targil you realize how often I'm not like this. And to start to like be aware, conscious, and don't judge yourself for being like this. And that's the, that's the hardest thing. When you catch yourself like this, don't judge yourself, observe it. Pin, put, like we said like months ago, make a nikuda, saying, okay, it's a bookmark. If I caught myself here. But don't judge it, don't judge yourself when you catch yourself falling into this trap. It's just as important. Okay. Don't judge yourself for being like this. Did you ever see a, uh, a, a uh, you know, the, 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 a plant that's also a growing organism that has chiyus of Hashem in it start acting like this? <coughs> no. <coughs> Shlomo always said, did you ever see a dog go to a psychiatrist and say, I think I need to become a cat. It's only human beings that think they have to come become something else. It's always us thinking we have to be something else. <laughs> okay, so now he's, he's, he's ending us off with, with, with awesome visualization, which, which we've done. The truth is, it's been a while. He did this. When was the last time he took us through a visualization? Does anyone remember? We, we were learning it in here the other day we did it, and it was spooky and very intense. Yeah. Death. Your funeral? Mm-hmm. Where your children are crying after you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Remember that one? That was crazy. That was mamish crazy. We did more visualizations in Hashkata. That wasn't from Neymar Shavatova, that was something else. But in this Sefer, I think the last visualization was the death. Before that, what, what else was it? Hmm? Throwing yourself into a furnace of fire and saying, Shema Yisrael, Mesiris Nefesh. There was one more before that, that we allowed ourselves to do it based on the Ravid and not the Rambam. Huh? Kisei Akava, very good, throne of glory. That there's a problem. Can you imagine the throne of glory even at Sewer and your Machshava? Rambam says no. Ravid says it's okay as long as it's what? Why are you allowed to, why are you allowed to visualize? Huh? As long as it's temporary. Can, as long as it's just the spring, like, that's just the beginning. Right. You're supposed to, after a couple of times to do anything, you're supposed to be done. Right, if that's what you need every time you visualize standing before Hashem, something very physical, that, that's only in the beginning. And even that, he has to tell us, listen, it's okay. There's a rival that says it's okay. Um, okay, so... Is it you? Okay. So now, b'machshava, shekvar nitchaska lecha atko. He's saying, if you're still sticking around, if you've still been around, the PSS is saying, you've already learned how to strengthen your machshavot, the power of thought. And the first few prakim, the otiot here, we're all about repetitively speaking about chizuk ha giving koach to your machshava, strengthening your thoughts. Tzayer lecha shata omed lifnei Hashem. Just visualize, draw for yourself, you're standing before HaKadosh Baruch Hu. U'bechol ma'asecha, babayit u'basadeh, in all your actions, in your home or in the field, b'ma'asecha u'machshavotecha, in your actions and in your thoughts, now check out the next line, he, t- he touched upon this briefly earlier. All your actions and thoughts, hemrak shilum chov avodatcha elav barach. What are you basically doing? What's an opportunity to do? Shilum chov. It's a very yeah. common word that Masach and, and uh, Mom keep on reminding us about in the mail. What's shilum chov? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what debt is he, sp- was he talking about? The opportunity that Hashem gave you to be you, uh, also known as life. Life. Right. He says, life, just the fact that it was given to you, means there's a chov. There's a, there's a, there's, there's a bill to pay. Just, by, just the fact that life was given to you, shilum chov. We're busy trying to decide our whole life. Was it worth it or not worth it? He's saying, once you get out of that trap, you realize... Life is a gift. It takes an illness to realize this. 
Usually, unfortunately, it does. It takes great illnesses to realize that life is just a matana. Shilum chov, he says over here, when you visualize yourself before Kaddish Baruch Hu, just remember, now is an opportunity to pay off the debt. He's not speaking about averas versus mitzvahs here, by the way. It's not what he's talking about. So it's not exactly the, the mashal you always bring about the restaurant, because he's not speaking about... The truth is, it, it's more like a restaurant than it is about the, the parable of, like, I have to pay off the debt of all my averas. What's the mashal of the restaurant? You said it a few years what ago. The restaurant is me inviting uh, all my friends out to dinner. We order up a great meal and wine and steaks, and at the end, the waiter comes and here's your bill, and I'm like, I, I didn't order this. I, I, I can't pay for all this. And, like, that's what life is like. You're going to have to pay your bill. I didn't do all this. I didn't know I was going to have to pay for all this. I didn't, I didn't realize that right. you're going to have to pay for your crimes. Well, that's the yeah. difference you don't here. Like the crime. No, no, no. That, that's not, this is not, this is not the paying off the crimes. This is Shilom Chov. The debt is by the mitzvahs of you being in this world. It's not now being accountable for Averis. That's another thing. That's not the avoda he's, he's, he's putting us into right now. It's a humbling thing, saying it's just by... It's not... It's paying in. Okay, cool. That, that, sounds cute. that sounds sweeter. But it's not, again, it's not paying off a debt that I... Because of, that I accumulated because of Averis. It's just by mere fact of being alive. And maybe the debt is, how much was I not aware that life was a gift? Maybe that, that's the debt. But it's not Averas. It's not a sin, sin, sin. They better pay it off. That's another cheshbon. They'll ask you in Shemaim. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, 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 it's a curse of hope. We're given, like, we, we, we don't know the world that we're born in because we, we, we don't have that idea. We're just born here. We're thrown into the world. But it's, like, unbelievable when you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, my God, like, I'm here. I'm really here. And, 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 and so there's this sense of, I don't know, Yiddishkeit starts with a, from a place of obligation as opposed to from a place of rights. You're not entitled to life. Like, like, who, who, like who are you to think that you're just entitled? But to not have this sense of unbelievable gratitude every time I open my eyes, it's, that just creates, like, willy-nilly, this sense of, oh, I, I, I owe you. <laughs> Right? I haven't heard that phrase in like 25 years. Right, Willy I, nilly? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's a, it's a sense of, it's just an overwhelming sense of gratitude. So that, that's, that it transforms into a sense of obligation. <clears throat> now I, like I, when, you, when somebody gives you a great gift, assuming you accepted it, right? And they give you this great gift, you just feel spontaneous right. this sense of obligation. Uh-huh. In some way, it's, it's nice to say the fried in, in this day and age. It's, it's good to say that. For a lot of generations, people woke up in the morning and... When is he saying it? Slicha. 1928? It's easy for him to say it here? Not be It says, <laughs> No, you're giving a dogma of a zman where it was, you know, now it's easier to say it. He's saying this in, in the 1920s in, in Poland. That's why, the, that's why the Chavura is a... It's not... Remember what he said? It's not... Exclu- uh, what was the wording? But it's not mitnase uh, either. It's not a. How do you say mitnase? It's not elitist. Like it's true. Most people can hear this. Without the first, you know, forty pages, it's true. It's just to say this is like it's easy for you to say that. No, no. There, there's <laughs> there's there's avoda of the chizuka machshava and avodat nefesh which prepares the soil for a person to be able to be in this place. No, but you're right. Stam kacha mazi. It's very it's difficult. It's almost impossible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jeremy. You're saying that when you're living with the and you move, that's the ikar. Meaning it could be that they're living 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. They're not living. But a mishu shimatzliach lehargia lematzav shel tzimimut. Then in that state, what is he going to feel? He's going to feel like gratitude. I'm alive today. I'm just tell him. Mashiach li hayom, I'm sameach with mashiach li as a kef. Toda la Hashem. Now toda, I'm modeh. With that gratitude comes almost automatically indebtedness because you're so grateful for it's the natural thing. result yeah, it's, it's the consequence what of that thing but, but Yiddish like guilt is the problem over here the problem is how do you do tshuva for a veras I think it's the that's where it gets Shev, tricky what the bird chef taught us yesterday if 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 you're living in the world of the mechitza right then your debt is your averot 
That's always that's, the debt. That's the only debt. That's the only debt you have. It's the only but debt. As soon as you break through the mechitza Peretz. and Peretz, then your debt becomes the gratitude of life. Through Zarach. Right. Through Zricha. Yeah, so that's the Merdich of I think it's because there's just one Very debt. nice. We have a debt. Very nice. So it's, it's our perception of the debt. Is my debt about the Averot, about the mechitza, or is my debt about life. the Peretz? But about just breaking through mechitza. Right. And life. But it's the same debt. We all carry a debt. It's just our perception of right. where, where that debt is placed. Right. But I think we're reading in gratitude. I mean, it doesn't it isn't said it explicitly. He's talking about just... Has he, has he mentioned it yet? I don't think so, right? Like, I, don't, I mean, I don't even know that I remember. Maybe he did. I mean, but no, I don't, I don't think he did, actually. Slow it so down. Far. Be, be here. Be you. And, and don't try to be conniving. I don't think we were... We, I mean, maybe he'll bring in gratitude later on. But like, we're not just yeah, yeah. Growth. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he even brought that word yet over here. Gratitude was a tool we've been using all along. For us, right. For us. But but why? To check in. We we, we were trying to think, like, what tool we're going to use to check in. The gratitude thing was the thing that we're using to check in. Right. It's one of our tachbulot. It's one of our tricks. Yeah. He's saying, if you really wake up to the fact that every day that you get up is a gift from Hashem. Who's saying that? He's not saying that. He is saying that. He's saying, and if you wake up and you realize that, and you're here for what reason, right? To do Avodah Hashem in the world, then he doesn't have to say, be grateful. <laughs> That's I, I, he's not saying that. He's saying, he's saying, imagine you're always standing in front of God. If the gratefulness is something we're reading. That's cool. No, but I'm, you're I'm, just trying, I'm just trying to stay with him right now. And he's not talking about right. what to do. Right. What, what, so what do you think Shilun Chov refers to? Shilun Chov is, is paying off yeah. being. You have to right now and every moment, you have to be you. And the only way you can do that is mitzmut and pashtut. Do it. And if, when you're doing it, if it, if it helps you, think of well, I mean, Not if it helps you. The reality is, when you're doing it, you're not you're not doing anybody a favor. You're paying off your debt because you have to be you all the time. And that's what you're here in this world to do. To be you. You're a nefesh and you're you're here to do some sort of tikkun or whatever it is. Be you. Be you. Pay off your debt. I mean, the gratitude stuff is cool and it's amazing. It's in one of the strategies that people are using. Yeah. I just don't want to read into something that he's not saying right now. It's Maybe. fine. He hasn't said Maybe it yet. He, has, he hasn't said it. What's, what's your version? Huh? Okay, I'll tell you one thing. I'm just I'm like looking at your face. It's the only like, reason he's. I'm like, it's I'm the like, only reason we're sitting said. here. It's it's. I want to know what you think. Uh, it's a long story, but I used to play guitar in <coughs> black institutions, right? Uh, and and like inevitably, these people would stand up to testify, right? Right. And every time, almost to the person, when they would stand up, they would say, "God didn't have to wake me up this morning, but He did." <laughs> And then they would go. And they actually, the ones I knew really cl- intimately, closely, they actually lived that way. They actually woke up in the morning and said, you know, he didn't have to wake me up today, but he did, so therefore I need to pay my do debt. something. Mm-hmm. Do right. something. It's a because it, they actually live with that mentality. Yeah. Yeah. It was unbelievable. And it's so weird because the last two months, Every morning I wake up now, because I don't know why, but it's uh, sometimes I, I'm wondering, well, I actually woke up. <laughs> it's weird. I actually woke up, and sometimes I'm thinking, maybe I ain't going to wake up. And actually, when I wake up every morning now, almost for two months, I wake up and go, wow. 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 Interesting. So, maybe I'm getting more black. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I wasn't black before. I, I black black. That's, that's, another, that's another story. Black that's another story. That's another story. Don't worry, at least some black's coming <laughs> soon. <laughs> that's good. That's the promo for the next Father and Sons show. <laughs> 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 no, I, mean, I woke up this morning. Wow. Stop. Wow. Yeah. Shilom Chov. Okay. I woke up. That's Tamimus. Let's finish this up. Oh, wow. Let's finish this up, Chava. Third line. Belech lidchok ulehait et atzmecha kedei shetuchal leshalem et godel chovcha. You got a big debt, huge debt. Vekule hay veulai halenecha bechol yemei chayecha leshalem al kol panim chetziv chovcha elavid barach. It could be that all you'll end up being able to do is 
only only half of the debt could be at the end of the day, right? But if this is the mindset, then from now on, He says, you won't be bored. You're not, you're not going to have any free time. You're going to constantly be busy while you're being yourself, paying off this debt by being yourself. Talk about mindfulness, living in a state of mindfulness and meaning constantly. Sorry? Right, kol neshama. The midrash says, al tikrin neshama, elan neshima. That every single breath, through every breath, it's not just going to wake up in the morning and be like, wow. It'll be like this. Wow. Wow. You can go to Hebron today. Wow. Go to the, I could just sit here between Yerushalayim and Hebron. Wow. Wow. This morning, I put on tzitzis. It's something that's written in the Torah that Hashem gave us in our Sinai. Wow. Wow. I put on tefillin this morning. My children are learning about Hashem in Eretz Yisrael this morning. Stop. Wow. Just Wow. To the extent that you continue to visualize this and make this a permanent thing that's happening in your mind and in your heart, he says, The more that this visualization is permanent in you, the result is you become a person that has more tmimus but it's interesting. What's the, what's the next word? It's three things. See? The beginning of the thing, the beginning of the parak, he's like, ah, oh, people think the chacham is going to be like this. He's a, he redefines here two, two words, three words. Tmimus, sheker, and chokhmah. It. Tmimus, tamim, is something, it's wholeheartedness. Chacham, we already completely redefined that. Remember that? That was a very big one. Michael, you were here last week when we, when we took the concept of using the intellect, how, what we use it for, and kind of like redefining it for the sake of becoming a tam, not for the sake... Usually people use chokhmah to become less tamim. He's saying, no, you use chokhmah to, be, you use chokhmah to become more tamim, but, if, but eventually, or while this is happening, it also leads you to a life of being someone that... What does it mean to live simple? You can live in a mansion and live simple. You can live in a hut and live simple. It's not, be just be real and be aware of the chov. That's, a, that's this life we're speaking about. Being aware of the chov. This parak, I, I feel, this parak, Ot Yud Zayin, has been monumental. In, in, it's interesting that we're almost at the end of the Sefer, but I think that without the buildup of all these months, we're learning this for over a year, this tiny little thin Sefer. <laughs> learning, learning it over a year. You had given me once very, a lot of chizuks, you know, how you were, you were do this five times a year. Mm-hmm. But hopefully, Bezrat Hashem will have enough patience with ourselves. Because if the result is that my day today could be filled with Tmimus, Chokhmah, real Chokhmah, and Pashtanut, then I might have a chance of actually waking up like that and talking like that Chevra that you, that you mentioned before. I wake up and say, Hashem, it's, it's, the, it's basically the, what you said is my favorite Hasidic story that I loved so much when I heard it that I put it on one of my albums called The Slonimer Story about the guy that goes to sleep every night and he made up his own prayer because he was illiterate, he couldn't read, he couldn't daven out of his siddur. So he basically just said, I made up my own tefillah, is that Hashem, if you believe that I could live up to the dreams you have for me tomorrow, then, then wake me up. If you don't think that I could live up to the dreams that you have for me, then please don't wake me up. And that was his tefillah every single night. And that's what kind of formed the Hasidus of Slonim, the Sivas Shon, Beis Avram, all these other Sfarim and Slonim. This, is, this should be our mantra, Mamish. If we could wake up like that, you're not just guaranteed to have a powerful Shachris. Mayrev will be Gavalt too, you know. And even like, you know, with the kids kvetching at night will also be another dimension. You know, Reb Shlomo once said to people that used to kvetch to him, one day your kids won't be, won't be screaming and crying for you. Not because you did anything wrong, just because they're out of the house, you know. Right. So everything is in its uh, proportion. All right. Shukai, everyone. Shukai.